Good morning and welcome to another episode of Farm Factor on Ag Aim in Kansas. My name is Conrad Cabus. On today's episode, we explore the emerald ash borer, or EAB, which is an invasive species affecting trees in the Kansas City area and is likely to spread to rural Kansas. We also explore the Midwest Soil Symposium at Kansas State University, where gyps soil shows off their brand gypsum that Kansas producers can use in their own fields. Stay tuned. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress, powered by Kansas farmers. This segment is brought to you by the Kansas Association of Wheat Growers and the Kansas Wheat Commission. Together, we are Kansas Wheat. Recently, the company Gypsoil hosted their Midwest Soil Improvement Symposium at Kansas State University. The symposium featured leading experts on the use of gypsum to add value nutrients to agriculture soils, improve soil structure, reduce nutrient runoff, and bring significant economic returns to crop operations. The symposium also included panel discussions with experienced gypsum users, plus a live demo of spreader setup and application tips. The demonstrations began at KSU's North Agronomy Farm and then were led into the KSU Alumni Center where various professors from different agriculture colleges talked about the use of gypsum in agriculture soils. Some of the speakers included Secretary of Agriculture Jackie McClaskey and Tracy Streeter, Director of the Kansas Water Office. Dave Sherman is Chairman for Gypsoil, and we talked to him about the Midwest Soil Symposium. This is the fourth annual Midwest Soil Im Improvement Symposium that we've had, and we are having it in different areas in which we have just recently sourced gypsum. So the first one was in Wisconsin, second in Indiana, third in Ohio, and we're here this year because we just uh, secured a contract with the Jeffrey Energy Center in St. Mary's, Kansas, uh, where we source gypsum from. Soon, Gypsoil's product gypsum will be widespread throughout the state, providing Kansas producers with new techniques to help their soil and their operation. I know we have a commitment to uh, our, our producer to sell 80,000 tons this year in the state. This will be the fourth annual Midwest Soil Symposium and it will be held at Kansas State University. The symposium is an educational event for producers to learn about Chip Soil's product and to see what it can do on their operation. Uh, the Midwest Soil Improvement Symposium uh, is an event where we bring the experts of gypsum from ac across the country to a particular venue where we can um, educate growers in the area and educate people who influence growers. So these symposiums are really um, an effort to teach people who will have questions about what gypsum can do. And uh, uh, that's why we come to a new area, because it's really a big educational process that we have uh, when we bring gypsum to new areas. Gypsoil's brand gypsum is a very unique product for Kansas producers to tackle. Gypsum has been around for centuries and used in agriculture for a long time. It really functions in two ways. First, as a soil amendment, it takes tight clay soils and it opens them up, allowing for better water infiltration and less runoff. But second, as a nutrient source, it uh, provides 23% calcium, free calcium, and 17% sulfur. And increasingly, our soils are deficient in sulfur, so it's going to be a very important nutrient source in the future. For more on Gypsoil, you can visit our website at www.agaminkansas.com. This hog is Hanover hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. Now another gardening tip with Annette Jackson. Fall is a great time to plant trees, shrubs, and perennials. 
Root development this fall means more growth with less watering next year. For faster root growth, always use Vertilone Root Stimulator. It is the only stimulator which contains IBA rooting hormone. Use Vertilone tree and shrub food after the plant has been planted for a month. Save 25% now on Jackson's homegrown hardy perennials. Let Jackson's friendly staff help you select the best plants for your landscape. The producer-funded Kansas Wheat Innovation Center was built to get improved varieties into the hands of farmers faster. Kansas Wheat, farmers advancing their future through wheat genetics research. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Ag AM in Kansas is brought to you in part by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. According to the company Gypsoil, their product Gypsum is a soil amendment used by corn, soybean, alfalfa, cotton, and other crop growers to increase crop productivity. I recently attended the Midwest Soil Symposium to discover what gypsum can do for Kansas producers. We've been working with gypsum for 12 years now. I began working in uh, 2002 and so we've had a lot of experience with many different sources of gypsum. Uh, our primary source today is uh, flue gas desulfurization gypsum which comes from the power utilities when they scrub sulfur out of their flue gases. And, uh, the product is a, a very fine, very reactive product, very uniform in, in particle size, uh, very, very clean from the standpoint of impurities and metals. And so when we use it on our farm fields, uh, we can expect to have a very uniform application. We are, it's very predictable in terms of how the product will release in the soil and how it will change the soil chemistry and ultimately make a, a difference in the soil properties. Um, probably the biggest variable for gypsum would be the amount of moisture that's in the material and that varies, uh, that can vary from 8% to perhaps as high as 15% uh, moisture content based on the production facility itself. Gypsum works best in a long-term engagement with the soil. Eventually, it can change the actual chemistry of the soil and improve it for Kansas producers. What we're finding from the response from the growers is that uh, the early adopters, the, the, the ones who've only used it for a short time, are beginning to see some benefits from the product in terms of uh, changes in their soils, changes in how their, their operation works based on that soil change, as well as the yields from the crops. Uh, we find that the longer term users who've used it, uh, let's say more than four or five years, they're seeing a greater amount of response to the crop, uh, to the gypsum. And that's just simply because gypsum is changing soil chemistry, which changes soil structure, which ultimately changes soil biology. So it's a long term uh, project that requires some time to make those changes that ultimately then the, the crop responds to that. Um, from that point of view then we are educating growers on what to expect from gypsum, uh, how to use it best, and then uh, how to manage that in terms of you know, looking for changes, uh, perhaps in some cases even changing some of their management practices to compensate for the improvement in the soil properties themselves. So these are, these are some of the things we're learning, we're sharing with the grower, and, and quite frankly gypsum is new enough that most growers are not, not aware of a lot of information about it. So we're really reaching out, bringing leadership and information to the grower uh, in the market for that very purpose. Uh, we, have a, we have a website, it's uh, gypsoil.com uh, and it is a very uh, involved full website that has a, a large library of information about gypsum uh, across uh, much of our market areas, segmented by market, uh, market uh, areas. Um, and in there are contact information for our company. Uh, we have a, a, an array of sales reps now across uh, our market area and so their information is there as far as contacting. For more on Gypsoil or if you want to view this program again, visit us on www.agamincansas.com or you can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Stay tuned for more on Gypsoil after the break. Tall grass 
Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tallgrass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. Hello, friends. I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows. We talk about horse health. We talk to top trainers. And we even talk about Roy Rogers. We're having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. unbelievable. Car Waters has what you need for all seasons for around the farm and home. Working, hunting, growing, feeding, snow removal, even fun for the kids. And a service department with experienced techs to help keep your equipment in top running condition. Tar Waters has a huge selection and the best prices. Tarwater Farm and Home, family owned and operated since 1978. They have what you need. The producer-funded Kansas Wheat Innovation Center was built to get improved varieties into the hands of farmers faster. Kansas Wheat, farmers advancing their future through wheat genetics research. Hey folks, Dr. Dan from Doc Talk. If you miss us on Monday morning, you can join us at 6.30 a.m. every Sunday morning on RFD-TV. Doc Talk has a national following. We're sure glad that you joined us on Mondays, but if you miss us and you want to catch us out on a Sunday morning, get up at 6.30 a.m. and we'll be right there, RFD-TV, 6.30 a.m. Central Standard Time, and I'll see you down the road. Innovation is being driven in places you might not expect by people like Brent Hayek, an Oklahoma family farmer who recently set a world land speed record in a Ford Super Duty pickup truck powered by renewable B20 biodiesel. Advanced performance is here, now, putting America on the fast track to more jobs and energy independence. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. This segment is brought to you by Central National Bank. Put our ag professionals to work for you. Recently, the company Gypsoil hosted their Midwest Soil Improvement Symposium at Kansas State University. The symposium featured leading experts on the use of gypsum to add value nutrients to agriculture soils, improve soil structure, reduce nutrient runoff, and bring significant economic returns to crop operations. The symposium also included panel discussions with experienced gypsum users, plus a live demo of spreader setup and application tips. The demonstrations began at KSU's North Agronomy Farm and then were led into the KSU Alumni Center, where various professors from different agriculture colleges talked about the use of gypsum in agriculture soils. Some of the speakers included Secretary of Agriculture Jackie McClaskey and Tracy Streeter, director of the Kansas Water Office. The Midwest Soil Symposium is set up to educate producers about what gypsum can do for their fields. One of the producers found a very significant yield in just their first year. Douglas Armstrong is a producer from Atchison, Kansas, and describes his experience with gypsoil and how it's improved his soil at his farm. My wife Kathy and I are owners and operators of 4A Farms Incorporated in Atchison, Kansas, and we grow corn, soybeans, wheat, have a, have a cow-calf operation. Uh, we uh, are constantly looking for uh, better ways to utilize our uh, inputs, uh, waters, or nutrients. Uh, uh, we're trying to focus on some problem areas we have with, with compaction, uh, water infiltration, but primarily uh, looked at gypsum for the uh, resource of uh, sulfur and calcium. This is the Armstrong's first time using the product, but after seeing significant yields in their field, they have decided to continue using the product in all of their operations. This is our first year using, using this product and uh, initially uh, what I see on some, some test areas we have a small plot area basically in our, in our plot I guess I, I, what I need to say is I saw that the corn is taller, uh, it was more robust and had a better color. Uh, in our irrigated acres uh, the uh, 
uh, ponding or the pooling of water after irrigation or, or heavy rain seems to go away quicker, telling me that we're getting better in filtration of our water. Gypsum can be applied using standard fertilizer equipment, so it's very efficient for Kansas producers to use. We uh, uh, applied it with a, uh, just a basic uh, fertilizer spreader unit. Uh, we were applying 1,500 pounds to the acre this year. Uh, we have a kind of a long-term goal of, of increasing that as needed. Uh, we'll probably run 1,500 pounds this year, maybe another 1,500 pounds next year. Take, take our soil tests, our compaction tests, and so on, and make a determination of what we need to do from there. The reason Kansas producers like using gypsum so much is because it's economically friendly to their operation. It's a great source of sulfur for Kansas producers to use that's top-notch and economically friendly to their operation. It also offers many other options for Kansas producers to use. Well, basically it's a, it's a, a very economical source of, of sulfur and calcium. Uh, compared to elemental sulfur, uh, it's a, a, you get more of an immediate response from it. Uh, the little bit I've seen uh, the, so far this year, it, everything looks real positive, and I plan on using more next year. For more on Gypsoil, or if you want to view this program again, visit us on www.agamincansas.com. We'll see you right after the break. Turn to a Central National Bank Ag Professional. You'll be in good company. They'll help you track expense lines, manage variable input costs, assess ground agreements, pick a crop protection plan. These times demand Ag Professionals. Central National Bank. You could profit from what they know. Ag operations run better on Central Time. Central National Bank. Money for life. Member FDIC in your hometown since 1884. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This is the fast track to more jobs and America's energy independence. Advanced performance is here, now. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. This segment is brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook, or visit us online at sftmeats.com. The emerald ash borer, or the EAB, is an exotic beetle and an invasive species that has spread in the United States. It was first discovered in Michigan near Detroit. Recently, it's been discovered in Lansing, Kansas, near Leavenworth. Yeah, emerald ash borer is an invasive beetle, um, originally from Asia. Um, it was found first in Kansas in 2012 in, uh, in Wyandotte County. 
Um, last summer it was detected in Johnston County and just this summer it's been detected now in Leavenworth County. So we've got three counties in the Kansas City metro area where we've had confirmed uh, positive finds of the emerald ash borer. It is estimated that there are over 8 billion ash trees in the United States. And since the arrival of the EAB, over 150 to 200 million ash trees have already died, and this number is expected to rise. EAB has killed tens of thousands of ash trees in Kansas alone. Yeah, emerald ash borer was first detected in this country in 2002 in Detroit. Um, the theory is that it was probably present there for five to ten years before it was detected, which is uh, fairly holds true for when we've uh, detected it in Kansas City as well. We figure it probably was at some point in the mid-2000s and it didn't show up uh, on our surveys until uh, 2012. The Kansas Forest Service has developed a morality curve for ash trees, and over the next few years it is expected that many ash trees will die. Uh, we're fairly low on that curve yet, but over the next few years we expect a significant amount of ash to die. There's somewhere around 6 million ash trees in the Kansas City metro area. It's a safe bet to say within 15 years the majority of those will probably die. Many adult beetles nibble on ash foliage but cause little damage. The larvae, the immature stage, feed on the inner bark of the ash trees, disrupting the tree's ability to transport water and nutrients. So the, the means by which the emerald ash borer causes the tree death and ash is um, the adult will lay eggs on the bark, the, um, the larva will burrow underneath the bark in the cambium layer uh, back and forth in S-shaped curves and uh, with a, a high enough population with, with several uh, larvae in one tree it'll end up girdling the tree um, and causing a disruption in that, uh, in that phloem layer of, uh, of the sap that flows up and down the tree and cause a tree to uh, uh, essentially have all its limbs be cut off from the ability to, to manufacture food and uptake water. Treatment and removal is a major problem with the EAB and the state of Kansas. It's affected most of the Kansas City area already and is likely to spread to rural areas in Kansas as well. Prevention is a little bit tricky. There's uh, no good way to prevent the emerald ash borer from landing on your tree or infesting your tree. There are some uh, chemical treatments that can be done to help kill emerald ash borer that may be present within your tree. You'll want to take into consideration the size of that tree and, and its value to you whether um, it's, it's worth saving or considering or placing because the treatments are, are not inexpensive. Um, the, the best way to stop it from moving around is by not moving firewood, not moving any, um, any lumber products or, or ash wood that may contain that beetle because it's going to move far faster and, and much, much longer distances on the back of a pickup truck um, or in someone's trailer moving firewood than it ever will flying on its own. I think that a major issue for this is going to be the cost of uh, potential treatments, but largely the cost of removing and replacing all these trees that are an important component of our urban canopy um, in the Kansas City metro area and all across Kansas as, as well. There's a lot of communities that have upwards of 20 percent uh, ash in their uh, their street trees and backyard trees, so it's, it's going to be a significant amount of money to address this issue. I think a lot of municipalities are being very forward-thinking in trying to come up with a strategy uh, ahead of time because once it's already there and your trees are dying, it may be too late to come up with a strategy. It is expected that Kansas will have many problems with the EAB, but this is also an opportunity for rebirth. I think for the future in Kansas, I'm optimistic. I think that the emerald ash borer is going to have a significant impact on our urban forests. We're going to lose a lot of ash trees. But I've talked with a lot of people who look at this as an opportunity to increase the diversity of trees in their communities. Yes, we're going to lose these just like we lost a lot of um, American elms when Dutch elm disease swept through a lot of communities. Hopefully going forward we're going to be able to plant a lot of different trees to hedge our bets and keep all of our eggs from being in the same basket so when the next threat inevitably comes we won't lose such a significant portion of our important community forest resource. Thank you for watching Farm Factor on Ag AM in Kansas. For more of Farm Factor, or if you want to view this program again, log in to www.agamincansas.com where you can explore more ag favorites. Good day and good luck.